everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conveyor Community Meeting. Today is September 21st. September 21st, and we abide by Conveyor Code of Conduct. Please, that boils down to please be nice to one another. This meeting will be recorded and available on YouTube for later viewing. My name is Savita, and I'm going to be your host today. Um, and I saw some new faces, so if you all want to just say hi, please feel free to. I'm going to pause for a minute. Hello. Hey, everyone. This is Tashna. So, yeah, uh, looking forward to working with you all. Awesome. Hi, Ujwal. Hi, Darshana. Welcome to Conveyor Community Meeting in the Conveyor Community. Um, I'm going to pop in the agenda um, link one more time. So if you all can add yourself as attendees, that would be amazing. Um, moving on, the first thing in our um, agenda today is demos. And we have up, upstream CI update from Marek. Yeah, let me share my screen. <clears throat> screen. Sure. Let me stop presenting. Cool. <clears throat> Yeah. Ah, great. Uh, can you see presentation? I'm not sure if uh, it's needed to full screen or if it's readable right now. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, uh, I would like to give some sh short update on the upstream CI, which is basically a set of tests we used for verifying our product or project. Uh, and the main thing here is uh, the new thing is uh, to add the test tiers. Uh, so, for, uh, as the first, uh, I would like to mention that all this is a cooperation between developers and QE. Uh, so, it's not just a single responsibility. Uh, about the tests we currently use, uh, each component should have its own unit tests uh, and maybe basic integration tests which run in the components. Uh, but then there is a big, like two bigger test suites. Uh, one is for UI and the other one is for API. Uh, this is uh, dedicated to just really the features. Uh, it's not like single API calls or this kind of stuff, but uh, should follow basic uh, features of the conveyor. Uh, then there is the CI. Uh, repository which uh, provides uh, work, uh, reusable workflows and also the status on the overall CI. And uh, now I'm going to focus on the API end-to-end -end tests, uh, which has introduced something we called tiers. Uh, this is basically split, uh, separated the tests which are executed here uh, to, let's say, easier but more solid tests, which should really work work always. Uh, otherwise, project would be significantly broken. Uh, up to, let's say, features which are not really stable uh, can be changed. Uh, so the failure, it might not be that big issue. So the main reason here why we did it is to provide, a, let's say, more relevant information about the project state or project functionality and uh, to build some really st solid base for the tests uh, or for the gates on, uh, for example, uh, PRs on various repository, repositories within the Conveyor project. Uh, so the tier zero is the very basic core functionality, which currently consists of uh, basic test application analysis and basic API tests. Uh, then tier one, uh, where should be the most of uh, features which we have tests for. Uh, currently, there are uh, metrics and uh, the other stuff. And then tier two, which is, uh, let's say, kind of nice to have. Uh, if it fails, it should not affect most of the users also. Uh, when there would be test for some functionality, which is work in progress, but already implemented and we, for some reason, needed to test it, it should go there. So this is uh, how we split the tests and uh, how it works it's, uh, with CI is that the workflows has, have been updated to like executed these tests by the tiers. So the conveyor CI, which uh, reuse, uh, provides reusable workflows for the components and the overall status, uh, started to execute tier zero to tier two, so we know the status. Uh, maybe this sh shouldn't be or wasn't planned to be part of this presentation, but uh, currently it's uh, the overall CI status is uh, is red. It's uh, not uh, not not really stable at this moment. This is caused by 
the many features related to analyzer and this kind of stuff. So uh, some of things I said in the previous minutes uh, are not working at this moment, but they uh, should stabilize soon. Uh, what might be relevant for you, it's, uh, or for some of you, is uh, the repositories which uh, provides this functionality. And the main thing I, or the main message I would like to, to, uh, to say is that uh, once we enable the gate CI jobs on the repositories like Analyzer Hub, uh, Seeds and uh, the other repositories, uh, please pay attention if it's red or green. Uh, if it's red, there should be some good reason to merge PRs even if uh, the, the gate CI is, uh, is red. And that's basically it for me. Any questions? Thank you, Marek, for the update. I do have one uh, request. Um, if you could um, open up the slides or put it in the Google account, um, like this is not shareable outside Red Hatters. Yeah, so that is one request. Um, does anyone have any questions from Marek? Um, I I have no questions. I just I wanted to say thanks for bringing it together. Um, I have a discussion topic about this, so I'll save it for then. But uh, this is actually a really good setup for what I was going to discuss. So yeah, thanks, Mary. Thank you again. So the next topic that we have is uh, from Ian. It's going to be about enhanced assessment module and archetypes. Do we have um, Ian? Whenever you're ready, please take it away. Okay. Thanks, Sadie. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So I just pre recorded this demo last night, but planning on demoing just the, the custom assessments work that was done to uh, move away from the Pathfinder API into the new updated Hub API for building out custom assessments. And it all starts with uploading your custom questionnaire in this this new assessments tab on the left side in the admin develop uh, the admin persona view um, that's accessible via that drop down the top left and you would click the import questionnaire here and this the the hub api now allows you to upload a yaml document that um, lets you customize a questionnaire by giving it a list of sections and the sections have questions nested underneath them. For this first questionnaire, there's really nothing special. It just shows you the format of uh, what we're expecting with the YAML doc, which is also written in the enhancement. But in the second, um, the second uploaded questionnaire that I'm going to demo there, uh, that's that's going to demo the dynamic functionality that's primarily handled by the hub. But um, so, for example, the auto answer for um, on line 22 here is going to allow the hub to auto answer this question with this answer if this tag exists under this category on the application or archetype which it is assessed against. Uh, and also there is a similar functionality for including questions and removing questions. So the second questionnaire excludes the second question and includes the third question for this questionnaire based on the same tag. So that's just to keep in mind for later on the demo when I actually show the assessing of the questionnaire. So for uploading the YAML doc, you are just going to do a simple file upload of the demo questionnaire and import that. And on this second one, I accidentally renamed, I accidentally named the questionnaire the same name as the previous questionnaire. So get a little preview of the air handling there. Um, so I had to go in and change the name of the questionnaire so that it's different than the other questionnaire. Um, so I had to actually click upload and then look that. So yeah, once these two are in, they're both required. So they'll both show up in the required section that you'll see in a moment under the 
developer persona or the migrator persona. Uh, so yeah, there's the ad, admin and the migrator view. So this is the, this is still the admin view where you're able to click the view questionnaire from the assessment view here, and you can view all of the available answers for the questionnaires and all the available questions, even though they're not included or excluded based on tags. And you can also see there is a notification or an indicator there that tells you which tags will be applied based on the answer to the question. It's another dynamic question assessment feature um, tagging based on the answer. So navigating over to the migrator view, you can create an application as you normally would. Um, and we're going to add the tag for um, for tag one so we can demo the functionality. So this is just going in and adding a, a custom tag and category. So at category one and tag one as it is sensitive to both the category and the tag name. <clears throat> So, yep, like I was saying, adding the application and associating the tag here, um, nothing special. There's there's actually a new drop down there that Dallas Nicole from the PF team helped with for, um, for adding multiple tags and showing that tag badge underneath the tag field. So that's, that's worth noting. And it also um, allows autocomplete based on the, the text that you're entering. Um, so that's a really cool feature. And that's that's actually replicated across all of the new dropdowns or all of the searchable dropdowns. All right, so after I created the application, um, I um, created the tag, associated the tag. Now we're going into this new screen for creating an archetype. And an archetype is a way to do away with the bulk analysis or, or bulk assessment feature that was previously available from path, the Pathfinder API. Now you can create an archetype with a set of uh, or a, a, a defined category tag that will automatically assign um, membership of any application with that same tag onto the archetype without doing anything manual. So that's all handled by the hub. And so here, adding that tag there and creating the archetype. So here you can see the uh, application is associated there in the table view. Now for assessing the archetype, um, there is a new screen that will show all the required questionnaires underneath the archetype. And these do not have any assessments associated with them. That's why there's a take button there. There's no other state on this button yet. You can click take, and that will take you into the new assessment wizard where you can assign stakeholders and stakeholder groups to a specific assessment. <coughs> And on this first page of the wizard, you'll see, or this first, second page, um, and you'll see the first section. This, there's there's a new wizard page rendered for each section from the YAML doc that we uploaded in the first uh, section of the demo. And you will be able to see the, the questions rendered here. And like I said, there's nothing special for this first questionnaire um, as far as dynamic rendering or anything based on tags. Uh, so once you actually assess and submit the assessment, you'll see a retake option and a view option where you'll be able to view the answers that you selected for the questionnaire for this assessment. And yep, you'll see those rendered there. And now there's, <clears throat> there's a special case where a user may um, may want to add a level of granularity for a single application even though it's associated with an archetype, they might want to assess a sing at a single app level and override any archetypes that the app is inheriting from. So that's where you'll see this modal appear. And there's a few options 
the first of which is override, and that's to create a, a new assessment for this specific application, although it is associated with archetype one in this case, or you can view the archetypes that this application is associated with and any assessments available. Um, at this screen, and see there, there's only a view option for test questionnaire one that we've taken on the archetype and nothing is available on the second questionnaire since nothing's been taken yet. Uh, you can see here, we're, we're now back to the archetypes page since we've gone to view. And to demonstrate the second option there on that modal to override the application, the uh, archetype assessment, you can assess here at the app level. And this is where I'll show the dynamic rendering on that second questionnaire. So when you click take on the second questionnaire, that for this app that has tag one associated with it, you'll see that first question is auto answered with red and there's a tool tip available that tells you exactly what's happening there. And the, the, third, the second question is not available to be taken and the third question now is based on the tag that's associated. So uh, that is, the main primary flow that I wanted to demo. And I wanted to thank um, Scott Dickerson, Mike Turley, and Dallas Nickel for the help on the UI side of this and would not have been possible without their help. Also, I wanted to say really thank you to Sam for making this all happen on the hub side because there's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes that is, uh, is really cool to see. So um, that is all for me. Any questions? Thanks. There seems to be one hand up from Hagai. Uh, yes. Um, uh, there's you mentioned categories and archetypes. Are those different? Oh yeah. So. A category is a way to group tags. Oh, it's okay. Archetype is for apps and uh, and uh, and the categories for tags. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Um, do, you, do we have any questions um, for Ian? That was an awesome demo. I am going to just pop in the um, announcements to announcement link that is enough associated with it. It's a PR now, but if folks are interested in reading more about it, please feel free to. And if you have any comments, feel free to drop um, a comment on the issue. Um, thank you. And let me reshare my screen. Just give me one second. All right. Um, the next uh, topic that we have is open discussion. And the first one is from Dylan. Hey, um, my, my two, two uh, topics are sort of related, I guess. Um, basically, I just wanted to raise a little bit of a uh, red flag, and I know there's some discussion in the Slack, uh, in the Kubernetes Slack channel about this. Um, we had the nightly build broke last night, and I believe it's related to, um, here, let me link it, this, uh, it's a pretty large PR that went into the rule sets repo. Um, and I'm basically bringing this up for two reasons. Um, first, let me just link it so we all have the link here. Um, so my understanding, right, is <clears throat> we make a change to the rule sets repo. That is always followed up by a subsequent PR to the seed repo, um, at least for the time being. That's how this works. Uh, I think no matter what, 
we need two changes for CI. Um, and I wanted to uh, thank you, Merrick, for giving the um, intro here. And also, it was fantastic for me to figure out that something was broken when I saw a bug report this morning. So I was able to go back and look at the nightly builds and figure this out pretty quickly, which is nice. Um, so we're, we're making progress here, but the seed repo has no uh, CI on PRs. So we just merge in the seed repo and we don't actually verify if that breaks anything until the nightly build gets executed. I think that needs to be changed to um, at least enable CI on the PRs and we don't merge those till they're green. Um, that's my first suggestion. <clears throat> and then my second suggestion is actually comes from David. He brought up a good point this morning. Um, we really should integrate this back into the release pipeline. So before submitting the PR to Operator Hub, uh, we likely want to go ahead and run all the tier tests, tier zero, tier one, tier, tier two. Um, considering it's an automated job, it can run over the night. <clears throat> um, that would be, from my perspective, the best way, because I, I think we, I believe this is going to exist in Alpha 4. Uh, Alpha 4 is still open. The PR should get merged by the automated system shortly, but I think it's going to be broken because the nightly build is the same thing that, that we publish for Alpha 4. So um, those are my two suggestions. And then I'm, I'm just also pleading for help to get the rule sets uh, issue fixed so we can cut, I guess, Alpha 5 now. Uh, Uh, plus one to yeah to having some sort of uh, test in the seed repo, and yeah I'm I'm definitely looking into the the hub and seed repo side of whatever's going on with the rule set issue that broke the build. Okay, great. I, I assume there's no disagreement there, so I guess I'll just keep moving on. Uh, yeah, and we do actually have we do have a GitHub issue to track that. We want automation to get the PR for the seed repo created. Um, you know, ideally, and that's the, actually the other thing where I was thinking is like, it'd be really nice to catch this when we submit the PR to the rule sets repo. But I don't know if that's possible because I think you'd have to automate the build of the hub somehow in the in the PR CI. Yeah, you would need to stand up. A, yeah, you would need to stand up a hub to run the seat against. So it'd be it would be a lot to do in a PR. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think the seat spot's the right place to do it, and agree with automation to get that up. So, um, all right. <clears throat> Anyways, it sounds like there's no disagreements there. Again, we can bring this over to Slack. But if anyone, all hands on deck to get this fixed, that would be fantastic. Uh, so that we can cut something else as before Alpha Four goes out, and that's still busted. So. Um, okay, the next is I kind of figured, which is, I guess, ironic to say this after I just said that Alpha 4 is broken, but um, I am wondering when we should move into publishing something that's under beta, considering we've merged in the work for custom enhancements and archetypes. Uh, I would consider us basically feature complete for what 0.3.0 is going to contain. Uh, obviously, I'd like, I was hoping that Alpha 4 would be a stable one to go and test and verify if we can go get a beta out the door. Um, but my hunch is that once we get a stable alpha next and we do some basic testing, I'd like to start putting together a milestone in GitHub for tracking what the work we want to get to for beta. Um, so I don't have a timeline for this. I think I'm more just looking that it, for planning next week, I'd like to kind of track that as our next milestone. So um, I'll reach out likely to different the different SIG leads. Um, and start asking to get issues tagged in your repositories that are uh, kind of required to get us to beta. Um, that's all I had. Just wanted to raise that while we're together. Thanks for bringing this up, Dylan. Um, I missed your second su suggestion that was yours and David. And um, if you have a minute, if you can add it to the agenda, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, I can listen back on the recording and try to capture uh, it. Sure, sure. Happy to. Uh, it was just mm -hmm. basically, let's uh, let's get the CI integrated into the release pipeline as well. So we're not submitting um, PRs to Operator Hub that are going to be broken builds, basically, was the suggestion. So. Wonderful. Thank you. 
I guess I have that here. Yeah. So, okay, that's it for me. Thanks. Does anyone have anything to add or any questions? That's a, this is a silent group. Oh. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's like talking to a brick wall. Oh uh, all right, folks, we have reached the end of the agenda. Um, and if you have any topics, anything that you want to discuss, feel free to um, message on the Slack channel, Conveyor. We have two Slack channels, Conveyor and Conveyor Dev. And if you have any questions, you can also like mail. Um, to the mailing list, um, Conveyor Community, Conveyor Dev. Um, all those information is available at the top of the agenda. If you click on the um, community repo, you would find all the information there. If not, feel free to ping me in um, Kubernetes Slack. I'm available there. Um, that's it for me. And I will see you all in two weeks. Until then, take care. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.